As I look over all your fresh-faced, wide-eyed faces today, so full of hopes and gusto and dreams, I uh, get a little sad that this is the future. Ah, graduation! That last step of academic structure before plummeting into the real world where it takes more than a hall pass or an ad drop slip to save yourself from the workaday world. Trust me, I know. It's that time of year when we throw huge parties celebrating our hard work, our achievements, our memories, and about how most of us will be spending the rest of our lives in debt while trying to pay back our school loans. When you head out into the world, young graduates, hold those degrees high. Be proud of all that studying and hard work you put in as you search desperately for a job that will barely keep you above water, knowing that idiots who can't put two sentences together are making millions of dollars off YouTube watchers simply for dropping their pants, singing like crap, or eating non-edible items. But Really? <sighs> Boy, Hollywood loves a good graduation scene, doesn't it? And there have certainly been some memorable ones. And since we're already in the commencement zone, uh, I figured we could take a look back at some of those memorable graduation moments from the University of Cinema. Dear God. <clears throat> When we think graduation movies, we often think of the speeches, or if not the speech itself, maybe something that happens during the speech, or events that take place shortly after they've graduated. Some of these graduation scenes have been such dramatic powerhouses thanks to wonderful performances by then budding young talent such as Jennifer Jones in Since You Were Away, Hope Lang and Diane Varsi in Peyton Place, or the romantic chemistry between Ryan O'Neill and Ally McGraw in Love Story. Other memorable graduation moments were more humorous and or ironic or amusing, such as The Graduate, where Dustin Hoffman becomes involved in a relationship with an older woman named Mrs. Robinson, played by Anne Bancroft, a woman who seems sad in her aging persona, but don't forget, she once had a crush on the Elephant Man and was married to the jerk mayor from Jaws. Bill Murray leads an all-out military showstopper during the graduation scene in Stripes, back when Bill Murray had a sense of humor and was not lost in the translation of pretentious artsy nonsense. In Animal House, John Belushi and his Delta fraternity ransacked an uptight upper-class homecoming parade which allows him and his cronies to actually graduate rather than be expelled for property damage and endangering lives because it's both the movies and a comedy in the 70s where logic takes a back seat on both accounts because everyone was on a lot of drugs. And of course, who could forget that magical time of the 80s where graduation scenes, like everything else in the 80s, were just plain awesome. We had Rob Lowe, Andrew McCarthy, and Ali Sheedy leading the Brat Pack in St. Elmo's Fire. Elon Skye's speech in Say Anything, not to mention Rodney Dangerfield in Back to School, or Steve Gutenberg and his gang of law enforcing lackeys in Police Academy. Heck. Even the horror genre had a couple of graduation moments, most notably the touching father-daughter and her friend's graduation scene in the beginning of Nightmare on Elm Street 5, The Dream Child. Spoiler, Freddy kills them all. Bummer. Then you have speeches, those wonderful heartfelt speeches, many from movies both hit and miss. Reese Witherspoon delivered one in Legally Blonde. Emma Stone slowed down a superhero movie with an insightful yarn in Amazing Spider-Man 2. Then she was killed by a guy in a goblin costume. Yeah, they don't prep you for that in the midterms, do they? Bummer. Adam Sandler made a fool out of himself in Billy Madison after managing to graduate every grade school level up and through high school. And all us growing up in the 90s thought that was okay. To be fair, we all wore all flannel and listened to corn. Robin Williams, after delivering his usual inspirational, heartbreaking speech in Jack, showed us his rear end in Patch Adams. And Tom Hanks solidified his taking of all the Oscars away from Pulp Fiction with his simple aspiring scene in Forrest Gump, while Richard Dreyfuss's Mr. Holland's Opus not only sparked a great graduation scene with Olympia Dukakis and Alicia Witt, 
but for a brief period helped made all us high school band geeks pretty cool and for jocks to stop beating us up. Unless you went to my school. Heck, even Twilight managed to take a break from the sparkling vampires and the constant gaping mouth expression Kristen Stewart wore in order to deliver us a graduation speech which had nothing to do with vampires or werewolves and sadly was probably the most interesting part of any of those movies. All in all, it's amazing where you may find a graduation moment. They can turn up anywhere, be it superhero films, slasher films, tearjerkers, slapstick comedies, those late night movies on Cinemax, you know, the ones that are on at two o'clock in the morning. What? And it looks like I'm out of time and I have just been fired, which is odd because they're not paying me. But nevertheless, I am outraged. So to your graduates, I conclude with this. Look to the skies. Look to the future. Look in the parking lot, for I dropped my car keys somewhere. And remember some inspirational words that I, someone may have once told you. This is ex-professor of ideology, Mark Macrina, saying, Carpe diem, oh, captain, my captain, nanu, nanu. And to that viewer who thinks he knows my life better than I do, know this, sir, I have a wife and wonderful kids to go home to, and the fact that you're con contemplating this in your spare time scares me. But thank you for watching regardless.